There are some things in life that everyone can relate to. Some experiences that are just common and familiar to us all. And one experience we all share is knowing just how deeply unpleasant it is to be worried. Whether we're anxious about our health or the health of our loved ones, anxious about our job security and income, anxious about the challenges we're facing at work or at home, anxious about our education or about whether we can endure the ongoing pressures of lockdown. Whatever our worries, we'd surely all agree that anxiety is just a deeply unpleasant experience. It's like some kind of unwelcome house guest who once in refuses to move out and leave us alone. Something else that makes anxiety unpleasant is that it rarely comes alone. When anxiety grips our hearts, it opens the door to a whole host of other unpleasant things as well. It can tempt us to be impatient, to be irritable, to grumble and complain. It can lead us into anger. It can make us feel alone. It can drive us to drown our sorrows in food or drink or spending. It can lead us to become fixated on our difficulties. It can tempt us to run away and hide. Anxiety is a miserable thing and it brings with it a host of miserable friends. And let's face it, we don't like it. We don't want it and we're not proud of it, yet we can feel powerless to send it on its way. Well, it's into this everyday, every human experience of daily worry that Jesus wants to tell us where real rescue from anxiety can be found. I want to read to you Jesus' own words from Matthew chapter 6, beginning in verse 25. Here's what Jesus says. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. Three times in ten verses, Jesus repeats the words, Do not be anxious. There is so much here to help us in these words, but today I just want to focus on one key thing, that here we see, as clear as can be, that God's heart is towards helping the anxious. God himself is our hope and our help when we find ourselves burdened with worry. In fact, what I love about this passage is how Jesus responds to the reality of our anxiety. He doesn't look on with disinterest as if he doesn't care, nor does he respond with disapproval like he's cross with us and ready to abandon us. Instead, he speaks with love to comfort us and relieve us of all our fears. Out of love for us, he says to us, do not be anxious about anything. Not about your life or your body or your provisions. Just look to your Father in heaven who loves you and promises to provide for you. Anxiety can lead us in a whole lot of different directions. But there is only one wise and safe direction to go. Not to anger, impatience, frustration or food. Not to self-help exercises to positive thinking, or even to clever Christian techniques. The only place to run with our worries is to the God who rescues us and promises to provide for us, ultimately through the sacrifice of his Son. Let us then look again to God as our rescuer and provider today. And in so doing, 
Let's hear Jesus' loving words once again. Do not be anxious about anything.